Hey guys, how are you doing? In the first video of spousal sponsorship program, I promised you that I would be making a detailed video about the documents that are required in this program. This program is quite confusing, so I thought it would be better if I make a different video about the documents. So in this video, I will tell you exactly about that. However, in the first video, I did tell you about the documents that are required, but that was a quite an overview. I did not tell you the exact documents that, that are required because obviously in one video you cannot cover everything. So today, in this video, I will tell you exactly about the, those documents which are required. However, if you haven't seen the first video, if you're not aware of the process, I would suggest you to watch this first video which is about the overview so that you understand this spousal sponsorship program, you understand the eligibility criteria, you know the step-by-step -step process, you are aware about the processing time and the cost as well. So let's start this video where we'll talk about the documents in detail. So to start the video, let me tell you that there are two different guides through which you can actually get to know about this program. There's this basic guide 5525 and then there is this complete guide which is known as IMM. 5289. Now these are just numbers. You can ignore them. These are just for the references. Just think of it as a complete guide, as a book that you can refer for every small detail. Now why there are two different guides? The first guide is just to give you an overview, the details, the eligibility, all those details that I made in that first video. It will tell you about that and some extra details as well about some specific cases so you get to understand the process and you're well aware about it. So this is the basic guide. The complete guide, as the name suggests, is a very detailed guide and obviously just by looking at it, just by reading it, you can actually complete the application forms, you can actually complete uh, you know, the complete process just by reading this complete guide. This is very helpful, however, this is too long, so it gets confusing for people and there are questions that still remain so I'll help you with those as well. So just to give you an example, in this complete guide you will see what answers do you have to give in the application forms that you have to fill. Just for example, this is one application form and here they have told about what answers do you need to give in detail. So people, if you're confused, you can check this complete guide and you'll get an idea about it. Okay, so scrolling up here, which all documents you need, so just click on this one, get your application kit. When you click on this one, it comes over to this section here. Here they have given one more link which will take you to your application package. So I will open this in a new tab and let's see what's in there. So here they have given some more details. It gives references to the basic guide and then it comes down to your checklist forms and instructions so basically you can download a complete application package through this web page here okay so how can you download that so for that you have to answer a couple of questions and you'll be done first of all who are you sponsoring so if you're sponsoring a spouse a legal spouse then you can answer that and if you're sponsoring only a dependent child or a common law partner you can actually answer accordingly but I'll just select spouse here let's say if your spouse is residing in India so I would select India here and then it asks the, some questions that you need to submit documents issued by any other country so maybe the birth certificate of your spouse is from other countries so in that case you need to select other country as well but I would just give you a very general example here so just click on this get checklist and forms I would not select any other country here so here you will see that it will tell you about that basic guide. We, you know about it already. Then it will tell you about this uh, complete guide. You already know about it. Then it will tell you about a checklist. So this is very, very important. This checklist will help you a lot. So I've already downloaded it. You can see it here. This is, this is the checklist that I'm talking about. This is IMM 5533. Then here you see the other forms that you need to fill. Remember the spousal sponsorship program as of 2020 is a paper based application so you need to fill all of these forms, take a print out of them, sign them, 
and then send it to a particular address these three forms are for the sponsor so let's say husband the sponsor and wife is living there in India all these forms would be for the sponsor to fill out I've downloaded them already so we have IMM 1344 here so I've downloaded this one this is IMM 1344 then after that IMM 5532 so we have IMM 5532 here as well then after that IMM 5476 so I have IMM 5476 as well then after that these are the forms required for the sponsored person the principal applicant this would differ from one country to the other so let's say if your spouse which is being sponsored is living in Albania in that case the requirements would be different and you should check accordingly I'm just giving you an example here for India so this is another form that would be required I have downloaded that as well so after that it is asking for some other documents like if you have an adopted child you have to submit his or her passport apart from that you have to submit the birth certificate issued in India apart from that you would need a biometrics that would be something to do later okay now this was for a person living in India and India was just an example if just in case the person which is being sponsored is living in Canada itself in that case let's see which all documents would be required so you can see that the forms are more or less the same they are in fact exactly the same but there are no other documents required for country specific requirements most of the people who are living in Canada already they must have submitted some documents when they got their visas so it is not required in that case okay now once you have downloaded all of these checklist the forms now let's see which all documents are required which other documents are required here so we'll get to know it from this checklist so let's see let's go back to this checklist and see what's in there so basically this checklist needs to be there on the top of all those documents which you have to send so here this is mentioned the document checklist because you have to keep it there so you can select it and then after that it is talking about the IMM 1344 it is written here that this form must be signed by both you the sponsor and the person who's getting sponsored so please make sure of that okay then the application fee now after you're done with arranging all the documents then you have to pay the fee and also attach the receipt of that fee in that application package so it is talking about that receipt of application fees okay now you can also select this right of permanent residence fee if you are paying that. I would suggest you should pay all in one go. Now the financial evaluation. Please note that only complete this form if the person you are sponsoring has one or more dependent children who has one or more dependent children on their own. So for many people this point would not be required. So you need not submit this form IMM1283. So if this does not apply to you, write NA next to the checkbox. Okay, moving ahead. Now, it will ask you for the class of application. Which class are you actually applying for? If your spouse is living in Canada, then you can select this one. If your spouse is living outside of Canada, in that case, you could select this one. Okay, now apart from that, just in case if you're applying for open work permit application, as I told you in the first video, you can apply for the open work permit only if your case is an inbound application. For an outland, you cannot apply for the work permit. So if you're applying for the open work permit, you can select yes. I'll tell you about the open work permit documents or the details about it in some other video. If you're not applying, you can just select no here. Okay, you can select either one of them. Now, let's scroll down. Here you have to submit this document IMM. 0008 and if you need any help you can definitely get it from the complete guide this link is for that complete guide that I was talking about earlier okay now the country specific requirements so just in case if there is any requirement for your country you should definitely submit that thing as well okay then after that it would be additional family information IMM 5406 then after that you should submit this IMM 5669 so if you go onto this form towards the last of it you actually need to 
put in your name so whatever your name is let's say my name is uh, Shitanshu Tiwari then after that I need to provide a signature here as well this is the mistake that I did in submitting my wife's application I ignored that we have to sign here as well and my application package was returned I wasted one complete month because of that so please don't do that mistake here it is written specifically that provide a handwritten signature next to the typewritten name in the signature box and that is just one example in this complete application package so this is the unique one and I wanted to point it out so you don't do this mistake it's like me okay now some of the forms which are to be filled by both the sponsor and the principal applicant so this is the form IMM5532 then after that you have to sign the uh, this form as well 5476 uh, you can select if you are supporting a representative or not now I won't get into too much detail in this video about what you have to fill in the forms and uh, what you don't so moving on there you have some supporting documents which are required now please note that all these documents can be either in English or French so just in case if your documents are not in English or not in French in that case you need to get them translated so please make a note of that so the supporting documents for sponsors so you have to send the photocopies please note you don't have to send the originals so what are your supporting documents if you are a permanent resident in that case you have to submit your permanent resident card I mean the photocopy of the card if you are Canadian citizen then you have to submit the citizenship certificate or the passport and accordingly okay you have to fill this section as well where if you are living in Canada then you have to select yes then no problem if not then you have to give a detailed answer that when will you actually move to Canada when your spouse gets here okay then after that there's a question about having a children who can be a Canadian citizen so for most of the people it would not be the case so I would skip this one now about the previous relationship so you can definitely check this point out as well if just in case you have a divorce you should be submitting all of those documents as well if the sponsor is working in Canada in that case you should provide an original letter from your current employer stating your period of employment salary uh, hours per week and support financial documents if you are self-employed and also you have to select either one of them you have to provide either one of these documents notice of assessment or income statement proof of income statement you can find these two documents in your CRA portal okay if you're not working in Canada you have to provide some explanation how you're going to support your spouse supporting documents for the sponsored person the principal applicant let's say for an, in our example the wife who's living in India or maybe who's here in Canada in that case you should actually be giving your passport copies so I think it would include all the pages of your passport where there's any stamp or there's any visa if you're living in Canada in that case you should provide proof of your status in Canada let's say if you're here in a study permit or a temporary visa you should provide that document as well the birth certificate is also required so you should also select that then after that you should also provide the copies of national identity card so let's say if you are an Indian citizen in that case you should provide a copy of your Aadhaar card alright now the civil status documents you have to provide your marriage certificate which is very important then about the previous relationships if you have had a divorce you should provide you know some other documents and like that moving on to the other one this section is for the children moving on this is about the police clearance certificate so this is very important you need to have a police clearance certificate from your home country and also from where you lived more than six months in the last 10 years so this is also required then you need to provide two recent photographs according to a particular specification you can get the specification uh, you know if you click on this link and after that medical examination okay so this is not required at this moment this is just mentioned here and specifically written that do not complete a medical examination at this time they'll ask you for this and then you need to go for that okay now the proof of relationship to sponsor this is a very interesting part because here we need to provide some personal details and proof of our personal relationships you and your spouse currently living together if no then you need to provide the proof of contact 
it's like you have to provide the letters printed text messages emails or maybe whatsapp chat or uh, you know facebook messenger chat something like that to give them the trust that you know you have been in contact since long you have to provide a maximum of 10 pages within your application don't do not provide you know too much of it however try to find all those communications in english if it is not in english in that case you need to get the translations done as well then you can check the other point as well you have to provide the proof of responses visit etc etc now if in case the spouse is living in canada in that case which all documents do you need to provide proof of joint ownership of a residential property so let's say you own a house in that case you should have the names of uh, both the spouses in the ownership letter most of the people would be living in a rental space in that case you should provide the rental agreement showing both you and the sponsor as occupants so just in case if you don't have it you can request your uh, landlord or the agency through which you have got your rental agreement it can be amended and your spouse's name can be added in it please note you have to select and provide only two of these so if you can manage let's say these two then in that case this is not required all right so maybe you have some joint utility accounts like electricity telephone internet or maybe joint credit card accounts or joint bank accounts that would all help vehicle insurance can also help so these all are the things that you have to provide two of them you have to provide all right okay just in case if you're not able to provide two of them then in that case you should provide an explanation why you're not able to provide that okay now these are the four questions these four questions are very crucial because after this it is written that if you did not answer yes to all four of the above questions you have to provide some other documents as well which are those documents this is about your photos of your wedding customary celebrations engagements etc you have to provide a maximum of 20 photographs so let's say you got married in india we know how fancy marriages in india are there are so many functions uh of course there's marriage there's a uh, reception sometimes there are engagements there are many other functions so try to include pictures from all of those functions maybe one picture from one function you can get pictures from your past as well if you've been in a relationship for long you can include those pictures you can include some old pictures where you look different so just by looking at the picture they can guess that yes this is an old picture and you guys have been together for long try and include those pictures where there are more people so it is a proof that you know there were many people in your marriage and uh, it was a legal marriage it was a legitimate marriage but please note you have to provide a maximum of 24 photographs and at the back of it you need to provide the details about those photographs as well everything is written here quite obvious and understandable then after that you also need to provide some other documents as well and from these options you have to select two of them maybe you can provide a documentary evidence of financial support between you and your sponsor when you have some shared expenses so maybe if the husband is in canada and the wife is in india you have sent some money you can you can provide a proof of that if you have got a joint account you can pro- provide a proof of that and this is one easy option that you can actually uh, get some letters from your friends and family members maybe three or four different letters where they say that they attended your marriage they really enjoyed it and they wish you for your future very simple letter explaining that they are your friends they are your families and again even if you could not provide any of these then you have to provide an explanation for that so that's it those were all the documents that you need to provide after that in this section they have specifically mentioned the signatures where you have to do it in different forms let's say in mmm 1344 the sponsor is there the principal applicant is there um, you know similarly in the other forms as well who has to sign and in which form it has also been marked in this checklist so this checklist is very very important it will make sure that you don't do any mistakes and it will make sure that you don't miss any of those forms any of those documents please select these only once you have filled those forms got them signed and then kept it in your application package So this is the complete application package please read every point very carefully i would suggest you read the basic guide firstly you'll get a lot of idea about the process and then after that you can read the complete guide as well i'll provide you the links for both of these basic and the complete guides and the link to download this application package as well 
Guys, be very careful. There is no scope of doing any mistakes here. When I was doing it for my wife, I did not find any video on YouTube which was so much detailed. So I thought that once I complete this process, I will make detailed videos about it so that it will help anyone out there who's in trouble. You don't need to hire an immigration consultant. You can do it all by yourself. So thank you guys for watching this video. If it was helpful for you, please let me know through your comment, through your like. If you think it could be helpful for your friend, please share it with them. And yes, if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please subscribe it so that you can get to know about the videos that I upload regularly. Thanks again for watching this video.